Hey, what is going on guys? This is DK back at you with another video here uh, for a full breakdown of the week two NFL main slate. Uh, real quick before I get into uh, the analysis, a couple things. One, I want to thank you guys for all the support so far. Um, you know, it's been grinding out videos here for the NFL, videos almost every single day. Uh, so I do really appreciate the support on uh, YouTube videos as well as Twitter and my uh, Twitch stream. Another thing too, uh, I will be streaming an hour before lock uh, tomorrow. Uh, so um, it's just uh, twitch.tv slash DK uh, underscore DFS. I will have that in the description below. Again, one hour before lock um, tomorrow Sunday. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys come check out the stream. I will be there answering any questions you guys have and uh, breaking down any uh, late breaking uh, news we get. But other than that, um, let's just jump right into it here. So I already have uh, the early look up uh, for the week two, but this is going to be more of an in-depth breakdown. So uh, let's just jump right into it. I will start at quarterback, and we'll start at the top here. So the top two guys, Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, I like a good amount uh, for GPPs. For cash games, um, you know, I really like paying down a quarterback. Um, so I'm not really considering these guys for cash games. But for GPPs, both Mahomes and Lamar just have huge upside this week. Mahomes, you guys know... I really like this Kansas City Oakland game. Um, you know, it's my favorite uh, game stack by far on this slate. You know, it's going to be a popular one for sure, but uh, I do really like this one. Um, you know, over under a 53 right now. Mahomes just, you know, even against a, a tough Jacksonville defense, but 30 fantasy points. Uh, you can just target this guy basically every single week. So um, yeah, no issue if you want to go Mahomes there. Uh, same thing with Lamar Jackson. You know, I talked about him in my week one video. Really liked him for cash and GPPs. He put up a huge day. And he honestly didn't do much on the ground either. So uh, now he gets a really juicy matchup against Arizona at home. Um, again, I think he's going to do a little more action on the ground this game too. So I like Lamar a lot too for GPPs. I think both those guys have a lot of upside. Below him is Watson. I think it's pretty solid. But if I was going to pick from these top quarterbacks, I would lean towards Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. Other quarterbacks, uh, Tom Brady, I can't do it for, for cash. Maybe for GPPs, but I really just think New England, it's not even going to be like a competition at all. Like they're just going to get off to an early lead and then just pound the rock. We've seen Bill Belichick do that a lot recently the last few years. So I really don't think they're going to unleash Brady and have him throw like five touchdowns. You never know. Um, like I said, it is possible, but I don't feel good about it. Definitely not for cash. For GPPs, I think you could go there, but it is definitely more risky just because I really expect this game to be a blowout. Let's see, other quarterbacks. Uh, Russell Wilson, you know, Seattle-Pittsburgh is kind of a sneakier game stack. Um, you know, I think it's an over-under right now, 47. So I don't mind Russell Wilson there. Drew Brees, I do like. This is probably my second favorite game stack, uh, Saints and the Rams. Um, you know, he's not playing in the dome. I really do like, you know, a lot of people like targeting Drew Brees in the dome, but he can still have a you know, good day on the road here at 6.2K. I think he's perfectly fine. Other quarterbacks. Now we get to more of the cash game range because I like, you know, spending down for cash games. So uh, I'll get to my favorite cash game quarterback in a sec. But first, uh, you know, Jared Goff, I think is a pretty solid option for cash games as well as GPPs at 5.9K. Um, you know, didn't have a bad week one. It just was there is a lot of you know Malcolm Brown scored two touchdowns on the ground. Um, again, the Saints defense, nothing to be scared about. Um, so yeah, I think Jared Goff perfectly fine here at five point nine. Big Ben, I think is okay as well. He's always better at home. Uh, you know, this guy does have some pretty big upside at home. We've seen it the last few years, so um, I don't mind Big Ben there at five point eight. Now Kyler Murray, so. Uh, this Arizona-Baltimore game, the over-under started at 41, I believe, and now it's got bet all the way up to like 47. So this is like a sneaky game, uh, I think a sneaky game stack because no one's going to be on the Arizona side. Again, I would not even consider it for cash, but for GPPs, um, you know, this Arizona offense does have a lot of upside. They want to pay at a uh, fast pace. They do, what, four wide receiver sets like 80% of the time. So um, I think... This is a, a sneakier game stack, but again, you definitely can't do that for GPPs or for a uh, cash game. Sorry, Andy Dalton, I think solid here at five point four K. San Francisco defense, um, you know, they're just okay. So I think he's you know fine in the you know as a cheaper option. Same thing with Kirk Cousins. Uh, Minnesota's got off to a really early lead um, or a big early lead against uh, Atlanta. 
last time out, and they just ran the ball. Kirk Cousins only threw it 10 times. Now we get some matchup at Green Bay. I do expect them to uh, throw the ball a little bit more, so I think he's okay. Josh Allen, I think, is a pretty solid play as well um, on the road against the Giants, but the thing I like about him is, again, he has that rushing upside, and uh, you know he'll probably turn the ball over a little bit, but um, this guy does have some pretty big, big upside. Again, it, uh, at the end of the year last year, um, you know, he was one of the best fantasy quarterbacks. So I think Josh Allen at 5.3K is a really solid uh, play for cash as well as GPPs. Stafford, I think, is okay as well. This Chargers-Detroit game, I don't really have a good read on it. Uh, you know, The Lions want to play slow. Um, I think it either could go one of two ways, like a really slow grinded out game or like a shootout. I really don't see like an in-between here. So I don't have a good, real good read on this Chargers-Detroit game. And then Derek Carr, definitely my favorite cash game play right here, 5.1K. Um, you know, it's just the highest over under of the day. Kansas City's defense is really not good at all. I mean, look what Jacksonville did with Gardner Minshew. Um, he kind of lit them up there. So, uh, yeah, Derek Carr, 5.1K. Really like him for cash as well as GPPs. Below that, don't think we have to go through any of these guys. I think Mariota's okay. Brissett's okay. Eli, don't really want to go there. Now, Minshew would be a guy I, I guess I would consider for GPPs. This is, I think, not a lot of people were on him. But, you know, 22-25 last game for 275 yards, two touchdowns. So he did not look bad at all. But Kansas City's defense, honestly, not that good. A little tougher matchup against Houston. Um, again, you know, that would be that would be kind of be a dart throw. But I think at least worth consideration. So that's it for quarterback. Let's move on to running back. So running back, you guys know I want to spend up and get, you know, a couple studs at least for running back. I, I just want those workhorse backs. I want to get three workhorse backs in my lineup for cash games always. Uh, last week I had McCaffrey, Delvin Cook, and Chris Carson. That definitely worked out for me. So um, I want to go back right back to the well here. Uh, Saquon I think is solid at 9.2. Um, but of the top three guys, I prefer the, the two below him. Now Saquon can get you there basically every any single game. Like This guy has huge upside. It's just the matchup not as good. Um, so that's the only thing that concerns me with Saquon, and he's the highest price guy. If you really like him this week, um, again, I'm not going to talk you off of him. And then below him is Zeke. So got limited a bit in week one. Um, you know, it's sounding like he's going to get a full work workload here in week two, but uh, we should have confirmation of that before lock uh, tomorrow. So if, uh, you know, if Zeke's going to have a normal full workload, I like him a lot here at 8.7. If he's going to be limited again, then I probably would hop off him. So this is kind of news. Again, we got to monitor, but um, I, I expect him to get a full workload here at 8.7K against Washington. Um, I like Zeke a good amount. And then Kamara at 8.2. I really like the discount here. Now, the only downside with Kamara is he's not going to be out there like every single play, like a couple uh, running backs here on the slate, but who will be out there probably about 70% of the time. And he just has huge upside. Uh, he's a great PPR back. Again, a really high over-under game. So, yeah, Kamara, you can't go wrong here. I really like him for cash as well as GPPs. And then below that, we get kind of to the next tier of backs. Dalvin Cook, um, you know, I really liked him for week one. Now we've got um, probably a little tougher matchup at Green Bay. Um, 7.2K I think is okay. And Minnesota showed they really want to work the run game. So I think he's okay here at 72 David Johnson, only for GPPs for me. Uh, you honestly can't go there for cash. But again, this is kind of a game that could be a sneaky shootout if Arizona can score some points. So, um, yeah, only for GPPs for David Johnson for me. Gurley, I just can't do it. Um, you know, it was only out there for like 70% of the time. They they like Malcolm Brown a lot too, so it just worries me. Now, can he get you there on 70% of the touches? Yeah, he definitely can. But, um, you know, it just... I just think there's better options. So, yeah, I don't really want to go with Gurley there at 7K. The price is down on him a bit, but I don't think it's enough for me to consider him. Because right below him, you get two backs that are workhorse backs in a you know, kind of a sneaky shootout game as well with James Conner and Chris Carson. Like both these guys, a good amount. Uh, you know, Pittsburgh with their number one back, they always just run him into the ground. So, uh, James Conner, I know he had a, a bad week one, but the New England defense looks really good. Uh, you know, Seattle's defense, nothing to be scared of really this year. So I think James Conner is a pretty solid option. And the same thing with Chris Carson. Um, again, this over-under is getting up there as well. I think it's like 47, 48. So, uh, you know, both Carson and James Conner are workhorses for 
uh, their respected teams. So yeah, I like both those guys in the mid-tier range uh, for cash as well as GPPs. For net, I think it's a little sneaky as well. Um, you know, I'd probably prefer Carson and James Conner, but I think he's still worth consideration here at 6.3K. Uh, Michelle is only GPPs for me. I don't think I can do it for cash. I know there's no James White, but, um, you know, New England just, you can never really trust Bill Belichick and the running back rotation. He always will do, um, you know, the unexpected basically. So um, they still have Rex Burkhead. They still have, uh, you know, Damien Harris will probably be active for this game. Um, you know, they still have uh, Brandon Bolden's out, but yeah, they have other backs they can give touches to. Again, James White, they said he's going to be out uh, for the birth of his child, I believe. So uh, they'll be down to three backs, which does boost the appeal a bit of Sony Michelle. And I think he's has a big upside for GPPs just because, um, again, Miami's defense looked so bad there against Baltimore. So I think Michelle, I guess fringe cash game, but the only reason why it worries me for cash games is it just because of Bill Belichick's running back rotation. But yeah, I think Sony Michelle has a lot of upside for GPP, so definitely a guy I'm considering there for GPPs. Eckler, definitely cash game as well as GPP viable at 6.1K. Um, you know, he had a big week one. I think it'll be a little chalky this week, but definitely viable here. Uh, Detroit's defense kind of mi uh, you know middle of a pack, so I think Eckler is pretty solid. Same thing with Mark Ingram. I, mean, I was kind of down on him going into the season, but this Baltimore offense looks legit. Now I know it was against Miami. But they have another juicy matchup here against Arizona. Uh, he's listed as questionable, but um, it looks like he's going to be good to go. So, again, this is news to monitor, but I assume he's going to be good to go. So I think Mark Ingram would also be a guy that I would consider for cash as well as GBP. Just because the matchup uh, is really, really good there. Henry and Marlon Mack, um, a little more down on these guys. I know they both had big week ones. I think it would be a little bit popular, but I just prefer other guys in their price range. So I'll probably pass on Henry and Mack. Um, I'll let others chase the big week one. Damian Williams at 5.8. I think he's actually a pretty solid play here. I know they have McCoy. Uh, they want to give work to both backs. But it's just any piece of Kansas City offense is so valuable in a really high over-under game. It should be a shootout. Uh, Damian Williams is uh, you know the better pass uh, catching back for sure. So 5.8K. Um, I guess he's on the fringe for cash. It would be a little uneasy for cash games, but definitely GPP viable here. Carry on, I can't do it. They just wanted, they gave CJ Anderson a good amount of work. Um, I really thought it was going to be carry on with a three down back. That was like all the indications going into the season, but they gave CJ Anderson a lot of work and that just concerns me. Now he can definitely still get you there with like what, 60, 70% of the touches, but I just don't feel as good about it. So um, carry on's honestly probably a pass for me. Aaron Jones at 5.4K, I can't do it. They gave Jamal Williams a decent amount of work. Minnesota's defense looks pretty solid too, so I just can't do it there. Matt Burita uh, at 5.2, I think is a pretty solid option. He's going to be the number one back for San Francisco now that Tevin Coleman's back, uh, gone. Um, but, you know, he did kind of have a down week one. Uh, but last year, and this guy was playing through injuries and still looked amazing, so I think you could go back to the well here at 5.2. A guy... Um, you know, I guess I would consider for cash too, but they do have other running backs. Uh, let me go to San Francisco. So they have uh, Raheem Mostert. Uh, he's going to be the backup, and then they'll probably bring um, uh, Wilson, or I forget his name, Allen, something. They have a, they'll have a guy in the practice squad they're going to bring up too. So they'll have three healthy running backs. Um, but yeah, back to, back to other running backs. Again, James White. Uh, it doesn't say anything in DraftKings. Let me confirm this. I, I'm almost positive I saw this on Twitter that he's going to be out. But let me just confirm this. I don't want to give false information here in this video. Um, if I could type James White. James White. Oh, may not make the trip to Miami. Okay. So, so he's not confirmed out. Okay. I thought he was confirmed out. So um, this is also news we have to monitor. Um, you know, if he's there... That would be a slight downgrade to Sony Michelle. I mean, James White doesn't do much in the running game. He's more of a PPR specialist. So this is news we got to monitor. Sorry, guys. I thought he was confirmed out. He's not confirmed out. They think he's possibly out. So, again, that's news we have to monitor. The Houston running back rotation with Duke Johnson and Carlos Hyde, I think, is, you know, okay. I don't want to go there for cash, but for GPPs, you know, Duke Johnson does some upside with the, 
you know, obviously he's a great PPR back. McCoy, another guy, again, any pieces, Kansas City offense is very valuable. Um, you know, I prefer Damian Williams for like an extra thousand, but McCoy also solid here at 4.7. Josh Jacobs is going to be pretty popular here at 4.7 as well. My only concern with him is if Kansas City gets off to an early lead, uh, what does Oakland do with a running back rotation? Are they going to keep Josh Jacobs out there a lot? Is he going to be a, a true workhorse and a uh, game flow um, uh, dependent or uh, independent? Or is it going to be um, Jalen Richard? And, uh, you know, he's a great PPR back. So I wonder if Kansas City gets off to an early lead, do they just go to Jalen Richard. So that's my only concern with Josh Jacobs. Now, um, you know, if Oakland gets off to a lead, uh, they're just going to pound them so, like they did against Denver. So Josh Jacobs, perfectly fine for cash as well as GPPs uh, at 4.7 there. And then like the cheap options like Chris Thompson uh, with no Darius Geis uh, has a bit of upside. Um, you know, Adrian Peterson as well, where is he at 3.4? He's probably a little safer because look at the early down work. Chris, Th Chris Thompson will have a little more upside because he's, um, you know, the third down PPR specialist. So that's basically it for running back. Well, I guess Rex Burkhead, too, at 3.8K. If there's no James White, um, again, Miami's defense did not look good at all. He still even got a good amount of work, too, against Pittsburgh in Week 1. So I think Rex Burkhead would be a cheap guy that I would consider um, for running back. But I think that's it. So let's move on to wide receiver. So the top top guys wide receiver, I think DeAndre's fine. Um, but Jacksonville's defense... You know, again, I know they got lit up against uh, Kansas City, but um, normally they're, they're a pretty solid defense, and uh, Hopkins should be shadowed here. So um, I'm not sure if I'm too high on DeAndre this week. Uh, Michael Thomas at 8K and New Orleans and the Rams. Uh, this is a really high over under. This game should be a shootout. Uh, Michael Thomas, the clear cut number one guy for New Orleans. So um, I think he's another solid option. Uh, for cash games, though, and I'm not really considering any of these top receivers because I'm spending up at running back. So these are all guys I would consider for GPPs. Devontae Adams, I can't do it. I know he's he can go off in basically any matchup, but Minnesota's defense looks pretty solid. Um, he was held in check against Chicago. I just think there's better options. Um, now, Keenan Allen is interesting here at 7.6K. Again, I don't really have a good read on this game. I think it's either going to be a really slow grinded out game or it could be a shootout. So... Uh, he's definitely viable for GPPs as a clear-cut option for uh, the Chargers, now with no Hunter Henry and uh, Mike Williams possibly being uh, going or not being available. So uh, Keenan, I think, has a good amount of upside. Uh, same thing with uh, Juju. Uh, you know, New England kind of held him in check in week one, but this is a game that I think is kind of sneaky. Could be a shootout. So Juju is 7.5, also pretty solid. Cooper, uh, a pretty good matchup against Washington. He has big play ability, so I think he's also uh, in play for GPPs. Other guys, now Sammy Watkins is 7.2. So obviously there's no Tyreek Hill. That's the big news. So I think Sammy Watkins, I know he had the big week one, but I think he's cash game viable as well as GPP viable just because, uh, you know, Kansas City, they have Kelsey, and then they have Watkins as the only really proven receivers. So I think Sammy Watkins is, uh, you know, definitely cash game as well as GPP viable. Thielen, I think Thielen and Diggs could have a bigger game uh, here in week two. Again, they got off to a really early lead and then just pounded the rock, so Thielen and Diggs didn't have to do much. But I think both those guys are okay. The New England receivers, I can't do it for cash. But definitely for GPPs, they're viable just because Miami's defense is so bad. The only concern is that New England gets off to a really early lead and then just pound the rock. T.Y. still had a big game there uh, with no Andrew Luck. Uh, the matchup against Tennessee... You know, Tennessee's defense looked pretty solid there against Cleveland, so I'll probably pass on T.Y. Galladay, I think, is okay. Um, same thing with Tyler Boyd. The Rams receivers, I do like a decent amount here with Woods, Cooks, and Cooper Cup. All kind of in the mid to low 6K range. So uh, any of those three guys are definitely viable here in a really high over-under game. The only issue with them is there's such a balanced attack. It's a little hard to predict which one's going to have a good, really good week. But Woods, uh, Cooks, and Cup. Uh, all really solid here in the mid-tier range. Let's see. Other receivers. The Jacksonville receivers, I, I'm a little torn. Now, in my value play video, I was a little more down on them, but I'm a little torn here because I think Minshew is actually a pretty solid quarterback, and all these guys are pretty cheap. Could be a shootout, too. So, D.D. Westbrook, Chark, Conley, 
all guys, you know, I think are still worth consideration. Probably would my favorite would be DD there at 5.4. Um, but, you know, again, I'm not too high on those guys. Um, let's see. Will Fuller, I've seen a lot of guys talk about him because um, Jalen Ramsey will be a locking out DeAndre. So, you know, Will Fuller will get, obviously, the easier defense. Um, I think he's okay here at 5.3, but I think there's better options in this range. Now, a guy I'm intrigued by is McCole Hardman here at 4.8. Uh, he played in, like, 78% of the snaps uh, of the snaps week one. Only got targeted once, though. Um, now he's basically the de facto number two receiver in this Kansas City's offense. You know, any piece of this offense is super valuable. This game should be a shootout as well. Now, he is on more unproven, so that's why I think he's a like fringe cash game, but definitely, definitely viable for GPPs. Um, again, I would like it if he was a little cheaper, but uh, you know, I think he's still solid there at 4.8K. The Arizona receivers, let me talk about Arizona for a sec. This would only get in, only for GPPs, but they ran four wide receiver sets 80% of the time. This offense just looks like a college offense, a hurry up, fast paced offense. You know, Fitzgerald, Kirk, uh, Keyshawn Johnson, and Bird all played on like 80% of the snaps. Now, they said Crabtree is going to play in week two, so I wonder if he's going to take Keyshawn Johnson's spot or Bird's spot. So that's the situation we've got to monitor. But really, I mean, look at Keyshawn Johnson here, basically min price. Five catches for 46 yards on 10 targets. Bird, uh, four catches on seven targets of 42 yards. Both these guys are like minimum price. So, uh, you know, any really piece of this Arizona offense is definitely viable. A game that could be a sneaky shootout if Arizona can score some points. So I think any of these guys are definitely viable for GPPs. Obviously, Fitzgerald has the most upside and it's probably the safest. Uh, but yeah, I think any of those guys are worth consideration for GPPs. Back to other receivers, uh, the Baltimore receivers, like Marquise Brown, I think is going to be pretty popular. I'm going to stay away from Baltimore Baltimore for now. Um, I just don't know what the rotation is going to be like. They played a lot of guys. I know it was a blowout, but I'm just going to stay away from Baltimore for now. I don't really have a great read on them. Let's see. Other guys, John Ross, again, I talked about him in a value play video. I'm going to pass for now until he can prove that he's a consistent receiver. Um... Let's see. Tyrell Williams. Probably my favorite cash game receiver at 4.4K. It's just way too cheap for a guy that's going to be out there basically the whole game in a matchup against Kansas City. A really juicy matchup. Uh, you know, in a tough matchup against Denver, put up six catches on seven targets for 105 yards and a touchdown. I really like him here at 4.4K. Uh, probably my favorite cash game play. He's going to be really popular, um, but I just don't see myself getting away from him there. Other guys, you know, Moncrief, I know he had a really bad week one. Still got targeted 10 times, though. He's fighting through a dislocated finger injury, but uh, he's, he's the number two receiver for Pittsburgh, so I think he's you know, worth a look there as a bounce-back spot for GPPs. The other Oakland receivers, so let me go to Oakland real quick. It was Ryan Grant who played the number two role and was out there. A good amount of time. And then Renfro is a slot guy. I expected Renfro to play more. It was only out there for like 28% of the snaps. Now, again, if Kansas City gets off to an early lead, I think they run a lot more through our receiver sets. I think Renfro uh, is, you know, a dart throw for GPPs because everyone will be off of him. Um, you know, he was pretty high. A lot of people were high on him going into the season, but, again, yeah, didn't play in that many snaps. And then Keelan Doss is back on the team, but he's not even an option, so we can't even consider him. Let's see, other wide receivers. McLaurin here at 3.8. Um, you know, he's right now kind of looking like the number one receiver for Washington. Now, the matchup, not the best, but he was out there for like 95% of the snaps, which I do like. Uh, got targeted seven times, so I think he's a, a cheap option. One of my favorite cheaper options for sure. That's basically it. Well, I guess I'll talk about the Giants receivers real quick. Just because we've got no Shepard, no Golden Tate. Uh, Lattimore is questionable. Um, so they could be down to, you know, Benny Fowler is the number one or Russell Shepard. So, but the matchup, not the best against Buffalo. I think a lot of the targets will go to Saquon and Evan Ingram. 
But, you know, any of these receivers I think are worth consideration for, um, you know, salary relief just because they're so cheap. So finally, let's go to tight end. Now, tight end in the top range, there's two guys for me that I really like. It's Travis Kelsey and it's Evan Ingram. Kelsey, obviously, no Tyreek Hill. He's going to be the number one guy here. Uh, he kind of had an off week one, only three catches for 88 yards. I really like him as a bounce back spot here. For GPPs, I'll get to it in a sec, but I think you could pair him with Darren Waller as part of a game stack. Both tight ends, you know, not a lot of people like uh, going two tight ends for, uh, you know, when making a lineup, but I think that's definitely viable here for week two. The other top uh, tight end I like is Evan Ingram, just because the Giants really don't have anyone. I just showed you who their starting receiver is going to be. I know the match, not the best, but, um, you know, if Buffalo just, you know, if they try to stop Saquon, I think Evan Ingram could have a pretty big game like he did in week one. So I think Evan Ingram and uh, Travis Kelsey, two of my favorite uh, spend-up tight ends. And then the cheap tight ends. So uh, Darren Waller, definitely my favorite here at 3.3K. He played on 100% of the snaps. Again, such a juicy matchup. Um, got targeted eight times, too. I really like him. I don't see how I can get away from him. Love him for cash as well as GPPs. He's another guy that's going to be popular. A lot of the Oakland guys are going to be popular, but I just don't see myself getting away from him there at 3.3K. A pivot off him is uh, TJ Hawkinson at 3K. Uh, he's a guy that had a big week one. Um, so, yeah, I think he's perfectly fine here. Again, I don't really have a great read on this game, but I think TJ Hawkinson, if you want to get off Darren Waller, would probably be the pivot, uh, the pivot there. Another tight end would be Delaney Walker. I talked about him in week one as a sneaky option. You know, Tennessee doesn't have a whole lot of receiving options. He's kind of Mariota's safety blanket. Uh, you know, got five catches and 55 yards and two touchdowns last week. So I think Delaney Walker, another guy that you could consider for tight end. And that's basically it for tight end for me. So let's go to defense now real quick. Uh, defenses. Let's see, the Ravens. You know, Arizona, you know, Again, this game could be, I think, Baltimore either dominates or it could be turned into a shootout. So uh, that concerns me a bit with Baltimore's defense. But, uh, you know, one of the top defenses in the league for sure. Arizona will probably turn the ball over. So I think they're a solid spend-up option for defense. The Patriots you could look to as well, too. I mean, Miami just looked so bad in there in Week 1. So I think the Patriots and the Ravens are spend-up options. Other defenses, I mean, I think the Titans in the mid-range are solid. I really like playing home defenses, so I think the Titans are, are okay there at 3.1. The Texans, again, we got Gardner Minshew. Did look good in Week 1, but that was against Kansas City. So um, I think they're a solid option at 2.8. Probably my favorite option right now is Denver. I think they're going to be really popular at 2.7, but for good reason. Uh, this game should be a really slow, sloppy game. Two really good defenses. Denver at home at 2.7K. They're probably my favorite defense on the slate. Other defenses, uh, you know, you could look to the Giants at 2.5. I wouldn't feel great about that. The only reason I, I would target them is because Josh Allen is turnover prone. And, yeah, that's basically it for defenses for me. And I think that's going to do it for today's video as well, guys. So, again, I will be live on twitch.tv uh, slash DK underscore DFS an hour before lock tomorrow, uh, breaking down any injury news, late uh, late breaking news as well. So, really appreciate if you guys come check out the stream. Um, and if you guys have been enjoying the content, I would really appreciate if you would like this video and subscribe if you haven't. Again, we're closing in on 600 subscribers. I really appreciate all the uh, support so far on this channel. And I will be back for another video, uh, breaking down the showdown slate. On Sunday night, which is, um, who's playing Sunday night? Um, it is, Sunday night is, oh, Eagles Falcons. So I will be um, back for another video breaking on that showdown slate. So I will see you guys then.